Welcome to College Street Victory Church. You're listening to the weekly podcast with Pastor Matt Funk. Lord's got good things. Welcome back, you guys. Good, good to see you. Welcome back. <laughs> We've been learning about Abraham. He wasn't just a stargazer. Come on. He actually counted the stars. And each and every one of you were part of that vision and part of that dream. Yeah, if you're joining us for the first time ever, welcome home. Can we give it up for everyone watching us online? Ruth and Naomi's, Joshua House, Westminster Ladies. Come on. We got people watching in Africa and Thailand, the Philippines. It's, we're part of something much bigger than just ourselves. And uh, this message is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I've entitled it Ground Control to Major Tom. <laughs> oh, you're in for a real treat today. I hope you got your Bibles out. Uh, if you got the word with you today, lift it up. Even if it's glowing. Yeah, look at that. Looking good. My notes are also available to you online. Uh, there might be a QR code that shows up behind me on the screen. If so, you can scan that, and I'll go straight to my notes. Oh, I see it must be working because you got your phones up. You can take it and take your own notes and share it with somebody else this week. That would be wonderful if you don't mind doing that. Let's talk about dreaming. Have you ever had a dream that didn't make sense? <laughs> yes or no? Absolutely. Sometimes you're wondering when you wake up, like, is that God or is that just pizza? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> like, God, are you, try are you trying to say something to me? Um, I think we all have. And when's the last time that you've had a dream that was so big that it scared you? And not just you, but maybe others around you. Maybe it was your spouse or your friends and you shared them what you thought that you might do or might become. And maybe they tried to pull you back down to reality. Ground control to Major Tom. Come in, Major Tom. <laughs> and then when you've got that dream, you ever struggled with uh, who to share it with, how they might receive it, and how this dream could actually come to be? Well, we know that not everyone is going to share um, your dream with the same passion the same enthusiasm, and it's going to affect others in one way or another, not just your plans, but maybe even theirs, because they're all part of uh, the family. They're all part of your, your group of people you hang around with, and hopefully they'll be lifting you up and building you up and not tearing you down. So what if I told you that the Bible is full of dreamers, full of dreamers, and, and you know, dreamers that... Um, that had a dream from God, dreamers that just had their own dream, dreamers that did things their way, and then dreamers that did things God's way. And the beauty of it is, if we submit to God's way because of his grace, in the midst of the process, his plans will always prevail. They'll always, despite our flaws, despite when we do get it wrong, <laughs> And we don't always say the right thing or do the right thing or we admit to do the right or wrong thing. D despite how it's received, if we keep seeking God first in all things, he'll help us align with that. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Praise the Lord, eh? One thing I've learned about when it comes to counting stars and sharing dreams is there's going to be conflict. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. You will have storms, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. And we just sang about how he's got good plans. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for his plans and purposes are to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. Those are his plans. You know, speaking of dreaming, when I was uh, when I was a kid, I'm, I'm still a big kid, but when I was a little bit younger than I am now, I know I'm pretty young. Uh, but when I was a kid, I often had my head in the clouds, and I was constantly uh, dreaming, and and I couldn't sit still, and I loved to go out in my in the in the backwoods. I called them the hundred acre woods. Anyone grew up with Winnie the Pooh and Tigger? Yeah. 
That's right. So I'd be out in the hundred acre woods and I'd be exploring and I'd be building forts and, and I'd be training for war. And uh, when I wasn't doing that, I'd be ramping my BMX bike over all the neighbor kids. <laughs> True story. <laughs> And when I wasn't doing that, I'd be making up stories and, and sharing them with my friends, you know, on the bus or at school. And uh, one day, <laughs> um, my sharing, my stories got me into a little bit of trouble. I, uh, yeah, because, you know, sometimes reality and make-believe was a little bit blurry for me. And you could say that, that I lived in somewhat of a fantasy world. And one minute, you know, I'm fighting Captain Hook, and I'm one of the Lost Boys. The next minute, I'm storming the beaches of Normandy. And so when my teacher, God bless her, was trying to have a serious conversation with the class about stranger danger, <laughs> I started to make up a what-if scenario. You know, it was a fictional story, but it could have been taken or interpreted as a real-life event. And yeah. So needless to say, my parents got a phone call from the teacher who was worried, and I was so embarrassed, <laughs> and I was ashamed. And, and, that, and that's when I started to realize that I needed to be careful with what and who I share my stories, my ideas, and my dreams with. Come on. So I know I can't be the only one out there. I can't be the only one that has had a dream or an idea that has been misinterpreted. Show of hands. Anyone had a dream or vision? Mis yes, my people. Talking right. Well, the rest of you, I'm still praying for you. I'm going to pray for the dreamer inside of each and every one of you today that that would just come out and uh, you'll have your share of uh, interpretations too. So, um, But the beauty is, is the Bible is full of this kind of example and how God speaks to us, and he'll speak to us through visions and through dreams. Proverbs 29, 18 says, without a vision you perish, or you're unrestrained. And so I wanna look at a, a young dreamer whose dream wasn't received well by those closest to him, and had to go through a lot of pain before he discovered his purpose. So we're gonna learn about a man, well, a boy named Joseph. If you've got your Bibles, if you would, turn with me to Genesis 37. I won't have time to read all of it, but I encourage you to do so. Uh, and I'd like to actually start in verse 5. Verse 5 here. It says, Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. Oh, yeah. How many brothers, be honest, that you've had another brother that you disliked in some way or another? Logan, don't put, okay, he put up his hand. It's too quick. <laughs> it's too quick. Way to be honest. If you can't be honest in church, then where can you be honest? But yeah, we've all had that, right? Brothers that we don't always agree with, brothers that we don't always like. And we also have our favorites. The Bible's full of that too. But the first point I want to talk about is maybe it's not the dream, but it's the delivery. Okay? Maybe it's not so much the dream, but it's how you deliver it. First of all, who is it that you share your dreams with? Sometimes our dreams are so big, they make others around us feel uncomfortable. The scripture tells us that Joseph's brothers already didn't like him. Why is that? Well, because one, he was the favorite. If you look it up there in, in the previous verse, in verse four, he was Jacob's favorite son. And you know what? Dad didn't, didn't help the situation because he made his son a Gucci coat, okay? So that it wasn't bad enough. Okay, I just want you guys, all the rest of you to know, the rest of you 11 to know, he's my favorite. And I'm going to make, you know, I, I kind of do this with Chloe sometimes. <laughs> Actually, the other day, I, I love you just as much, Logan, but it's a different kind of love for your, your sister. You know what I'm talking about. But Chloe gets a little spoiled. Isn't that right, honey? She's the youngest. She's the only girl. The rest are all, yeah, another four boys. And the other day, she got a pink motocross helmet to go on the quad with daddy. Wow. <laughs> that was her um, identification that I'm the favorite. New helmet for moi. 
You know, I gotta say, just on a side note though, I wanna brag about you guys and brag about the church and making people feel valuable and making people seen. And I, I, oh, I was almost in tears this morning because when our ladies show up and they come and they serve so much and they got kids and they come early to the church, if you've ever watched our team, they're amazing. So they pull right up to the front, ballet style, they get the doors for them, they help them get with the kids, get them out of the out of the car, or get a coffee or tea in their hand. We just we want to honor others, right? We want to be known for that. And I and I grabbed Chloe and I was carrying over to kids and she says, Daddy, every time we come to church, I feel famous. And I said, Yeah. And I said, Oh, you can clap already for that. And she says, Because because we pull up, people get the doors for us, and they welcome us, and then, and the, I think even the red carpet's out sometimes, you know? But I thought, that is so special. If my daughter said, thank you so much, you guys, for doing that for our everyone that serves here in this church, because we're all special. <laughs> turn to someone and say, you're special. Yeah. Now turn back to another person and say, I know I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> see, you know what? You've got you've got a coat too. You might not see it, but you've got your heavenly Father's favor on you. Each and every one of you, you've got that. So whatever you imagine that coat looking like, or helmet, or whatever else, but pink, bright pink helmet. Okay, so his father makes him this coat, coat of many colors, and. Just before telling his brothers about this dream, it says in verse two that he comes with a bad report about his brothers to his father. So probably not good time, Joseph. Hello, <laughs> right? Right vision, maybe wrong place, wrong people to share it with. Maybe God was right, but your timing was wrong. Am I speaking to anyone? All right. And 17-year-old uh, Joseph, he, he's obviously he's a bit of a tattletale. And he had a God-given dream, that part was right, but didn't know how and who he should share it with. Sometimes it's not the dream, but how you deliver it, okay? Let's look here in uh, verse 9. Still in uh, chapter 37 of verse 9. And then he had another dream. He told it to his brothers, listen, he said, I had a dream. No, I had another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> this is ground control to Major Tom. Come in. Come in. Ground control to Major Tom. Listen up. Get your phones out. That was so well done. Oh, I love being part of a creative church. Ground control to Major Tom. You know, on the 20th of April, 1992, David Bowie knelt down on the stage in front of 72,000 fans in London, and he prayed the Lord's Prayer out loud. You see, even David Bowie had seasons where he struggled he struggled with his identity you could hear the struggle even when he's in the song feeling so alone and see god sees you right where you're at and he'll do whatever it takes to reach you where you are it's just so amazing you can you can read an article by rolling stone in, in 1993 about about that and about his identity you know that when they interviewed the band after and everybody else like they you could see people were shrugging their shoulders. He hadn't practiced this. This wasn't something that was planned, but he wanted the world to know that he was a Christian. He wanted the world to know about Jesus. And I just think that's so amazing. You never know what God is doing and how he can take what appears to be your dream and make it part of his. So <laughs> poor Joseph, you know, we left him hanging here. Joseph, when will you learn? <laughs> it didn't go well the first time. And what made him think that it was wise to share with his brothers a second time? And the problem was it wasn't wise. You know, and I want to ask you guys, like, who will interpret your dreams? 
you know, I did a, a teaching for the men this, this, this morning. And if you get a chance, I'd encourage you to go to the Lambs to Lions podcast. I talk about three ways to kill a dream. <laughs> three ways to kill a dream. And Joseph's brothers were, they didn't, it says they wouldn't speak well of him. And when you don't speak well of others and you don't speak well of your dream or their dream, that's a quick way to kill it. Because life and death are in the power of the tongue, right? You see, the, the, the brothers and the father, they would, you see, if you understood the culture at the time, dreams were important. They knew that dreams had meaning, that God would speak to people in visions and in dreams. And so they were quick to interpret you know, 11 stars, that's 11 brothers. The sun and the moon, that's mom and dad bowing down to him. And though, even though Joseph wasn't able to fully interpret the dream, by sharing that dream, it put him in a position of power that they weren't ready for and neither was he. Sometimes we get those stars in our eyes and we forget where we are. How do we remain present in the now and still plan for the future? See, Joseph's dream made it sound like that Joseph would rule over them. And sometimes we get lost in our dreams and we misinterpret the meaning. And we fail to recognize how it will affect others. Because if we fast forward, and maybe Pastor Charmaine will share a little more next week. But we see that it was part of saving and serving his family. There was more to the dream than the image that he had. And in verse 19, if we move along, we find Joseph sent out by his father to go find his brothers. And as he's looking for his brothers and asking around where they are, they say this, verse 19, here comes the dreamer. <laughs> Come now. Let us kill him and throw him into one of the cisterns, saying that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. Hmm. What will become of your dreams? A dreamer with, with, without godly insight will develop insecurity. And not everyone will get your dream. The enemy will go to great lengths to see that your dream doesn't come true, that doesn't come to fulfillment. He may even use those that are closest to you to discourage you or deter, deter you. And the, th the thing is that when, when, when God has destined us with a dream that is connected to him and His to glorify him and his, his kingdom, we can be encouraged. Even when we have to take what looks like maybe a detour. You know what I love about detours? It's a matter of perspective. In the moment, I don't like with a sign when the sign says detour. Do you? It's like you had a plan, you had a destination, and then all of a sudden, the silly, the silly city of Chilliwack decided, nope, you're going this way. You can get all upset about it, or you can realize that when you take the detour, you will see things that maybe you've never seen before. You will meet people that you've met, never met before. And sometimes if you're open, you'll realize that God will even put people in your path so that you can help interpret their dreams. Come on. That if your dream was never just about you. And God will, the thing about the God that we serve, he's an unstoppable God. So he will even take what the enemy meant for evil and he will turn it and use it for good. For well, Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together for good for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Romans 16, 9 says that the heart of a man plans his ways, but the Lord, someone say the Lord, establishes his steps. Would you stand with me? Our takeaway today is this. Dreamers don't get discouraged by detours. Mm -mm. Come on. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, Lord, for the, the insight and the foresight that you have given us.
I thank you for the reminders of maybe where we said no to you, no to a dream, because we bought into a lie, because it didn't get interpreted the way that we were hoping it would be interpreted. And Lord, I pray now through your Holy Spirit that you would speak to that dreamer, that they would see how it comes in a line with building your church, your kingdom. And Lord, that you would open up hands and open up hearts to receive what it is that you have for them today and in the years to come. In Jesus' name. If you're here today and you've struggled with with having a dream, If you struggled with interpreting a dream, communicating a dream, I want to connect you with the creator of that dream. Who better to go to than the one that designed you and knit you in your mother's womb, who laid out all your days before you? If you are here today, I want to invite you to have a relationship with the Creator, with Jesus. Paul says in Romans 10 verse 9 that if we believe in our heart, confessing with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believing that God the Father raised His Son from the grave, that you will be saved. That's the starting point. Maybe it's time you rewrite your story with the resurrection and his glory. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And so I'm going to give you that opportunity right here, right now, just to do that. To meet God right where you're at. To surrender all your hopes and all your dreams and all that you are and to trust him and place it in his hand. So would you just pray with me? I'm going to ask that everyone in this house pray it together. Whether you prayed it before or you're praying it for the first time ever or you're coming back to him, just repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, I believe. I believe that you came and you died for me and that you rose from the grave. Would you forgive me for my sins? I'm ready to dream again. I'm ready to lay it all at the foot of the cross and to follow you all the days of my life. Guide, lead me, and direct me. In your name I pray. Amen. Just stay in the moment, eyes closed and head bowed in the moment. If you you said that prayer, made that confession for the first time, all heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I want you to, to just shoot up your hand on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Come on, let's go. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Right on. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And and if this was your comeback moment, it's just as great as your first moment. For the scripture says, if just one comes back to know the Lord, one comes back to him, that there is a party going on in heaven. And if that's you, just raise your hand right now. It might come. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, this is... No one can stop what God has put inside of you. He will never leave you nor forsake you, for he goes before you. His favor surrounds you like a shield. You will walk by faith and not by sight. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom. I speak freedom over you. Freedom over your family. Freedom over your future. Freedom. Praise Jesus. Well, the next thing we're going to do um, is we're going to open it up for baptism. Because Jesus said in the, in the scriptures, it says this. It says that he requires obedience even over sacrifice. And Jesus said, go into all the world, not just some of the world, not just the Fraser Valley, not just where it's convenient, but making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey his command. And guess what? Surely he is with you always, even to the ends of the earth. So we as a church, College Street Victory Church, 
we know we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We know what our future holds with the Lord. But we know that life happens. Isn't that right, Dave? Life happens, and we need to seize the moment now. Now is your moment. So if you haven't yet been baptized, or maybe you were baptized into religion and not relationship, maybe you were baptized as a baby and you didn't get a, a choice and a decision on your part to do so. If you'd like to come forward, you the only reason you need is Jesus. The word baptism means to be all in. In Romans it says that when you are baptized, you are baptized with Christ. When you go into the water, it says it represents when Christ went to the grave, that you are buried with Christ. And when you come up out of the water, it says that you are resurrected with Christ. I think sometimes the thing that is holding us back is us. And we need to say goodbye to our old self, come on, and leave it dead in the water so we can step into the future that God had planned for us long ago in his freedom. Thank you for tuning in today and thank you for continuing to partner with us and for giving so generously to this ministry. If you would like to find out more about how you can partner with us, visit our website at www.wherepeoplematter.church and click the giving link. And don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends. See you next time.